All right, everybody, we are back with another video. I am back from the Invitational. I got a week to catch up on all my work and stuff. Um, for anyone that is curious, we got 60th at the Invitational. I was really, really proud of that. That's uh, my first time actually placing um, for cash at the Invitational. Um, we went 6 and 2 day 1, 4 0 with Standard, and then 2 2 with Modern. Um, we did go. Um, we went with Esper mid range uh, deck with for standard, and then we went with Mono Green Tron for modern. So we got six two day one four L standard, and the two two modern, and then day two we went two 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 with both. So that got us the sixtieth place um, uh, finish, which was pretty awesome. We did lose our last one. Uh, got completely trounced by this red deck when players that killed us turn three both times. Um, it was hilarious because, like, he, I was like, hey, do you want to tie guarantee top 64? He's like, no, no interest. I'm, I'm going for top 32. Because he was like, I'm pretty confident if we lose, uh, both of us still make top 64. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I'd rather guarantee it. But if you are you want to play, we're going to play. Um, so get crushed by him. Next day, I run it back. Uh, it was, like, day three here of the con, and I decided to do the championship. And I'm on e-tron here. Uh, like, fourth round, I see him again, and we're playing. Oh no, fifth round we're playing. Um, he and he was talking about Neoform because I saw him at Star City Games that night, the actual store, uh, how he's gonna be building Neoform. And so I'm like, hey, did you end up putting Neoform together? He goes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, putting it together last night, and I just had that feeling that he was on Neoform. And game one, I did turn, I, I chaliced him on one, chaliced him on two, chaliced him on three, locked him out of the game, and it was done. But game uh, two, I go chalice on one. He's like, blow it up. Uh, blow that up and I, your uh, Graft Digger's Cage, not my Chalice, uh, blows up my Graft Digger's Cage and then just proceeds to go off and kill me turn three. Um, extremely punishing though was game um, three where he, I went land, map, uh, go. He was like, uh, he had revealed triple Chancellor and he was like, proceed to combo off turn one and kill you. I'm like, no big deal. Okay, that's cool, bud. <laughs> So, I uh, got 60th in the Invitational, super excited for that, and then uh, we did a mediocre progress on the championship. So, for tonight, we are going to be doing an updated list for um, Tron. I know a lot of you guys checked me out for my Tron content, and I did want to give you guys my new list that I'm playing around with. I ended up not playing this at the um, uh, IQ yesterday, but I still, because I'm just playing around with it. Um, and then after that, we'll play some Hogvine because that's the new deck everybody's afraid of. So, land base, I've kept it the same. We're running the 19 lands, 3 forests, and 4 utility lands. I still feel really iffy about that. Um, Blue-white's in a really strong position right now, and I think it's only going to get stronger, so it may be correct just to trim one of these. The problem is, I think they're all really important. So I may go to what my teammate Noah's doing, which is 20 lands, but 20 lands feels rough, so... But he trimmed um, a relic for it. Um, over here, the stirring, scrying, spheres, stars, and maps, those are all still four ofs. The relics, I'm on three relics. I did try four. Four felt a bit much. I'm on three again. Three old stones, four cards, two worm coils, four a big card, two ugans. I'm down to one ballista um, and a one worm, and two worm coils here. That's to make room for the additional relics. The other thing that I'm doing right now is I'm trying it out for the first time. I have not done this yet, but my teammate and I were talking about this, and we discussed that we may want to trim one Ulamog for another Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Now, this one's a little bit worse when you cast it. It only destroys one permanent instead of exiling two. Um, they're both indestructible, and... Uh, the new Ulamog that everybody uses exiles the top 20. It, the original Ulamog makes them annihilate 4. But the reason we're playing it is for its triggered ability for the mill. Uh, we thought it'd be a cute way to just prevent ourselves from getting milled because Hogvine, one of the ways they do go for the kill is the mill. So they sacrifice their whole board to go for the mill. We can just prevent them doing that with this. Still relevant cast ability. It's a little bit harder to cast on 11, so we can't get that turn 4. But turn 5, that's usually pretty reasonable. Over in the sideboard here, we got two uh, claims, three thrags. Um, I was running one Tormod's Crypt. I'm, I'm because I was running four relics in the main, but because I'm running three relics, I'm going to play the relic in the side. Liquid Metal, Sorcerer Spyglass, Crucible, Staring Bridge, uh, Oblivion Stone, Trinosphere, Michael Synth, Worm Coil, and Walking Ballista. So all of that's there. Let me go ahead and export this real quick, um, just so I can put it into the stream decker for you guys. And then we're going to get going. 
Oh, and a quick shout out because I actually got uh, asked by I got approached by a couple different people um, over the weekends and um, and everything. Uh, so much appreciated for everybody that uh, sees me. If you guys see me in real life and all that stuff, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys. Uh, it's really awesome to be able to meet people and actually like, hey, you're the guy that I watch on stream. So that's really awesome. And yesterday I was actually just jamming some games and I went against uh, Trogdor. Um, 1396, so me and him had a quick game. He was on the uh, Tron list as well. So, much appreciated, Trogdor. It was a pleasure playing against you. Um, so let's get started with this league. Oop, that's the wrong deck. So we're going to play the Karn deck first, and then we'll switch over to uh, Hogvine. Obviously, we're playing this because... It's Father's Day, and we got to play with the Karn Father. So, all eight of them. Alrighty, no charm pieces. Two ways to search it up, but this hand would require a little bit of luck and uh, it wouldn't be to like a turn five Tron. So we're gonna mulligan this. Uh, we've got two pieces, another land. Uh, I guess we can keep this, right? If it's our general rules. It's a little awkward having the infinite gyre in hand if we were going against the Hogmine deck. Couldn't actually get rid of it. <laughs> Says rip the map off the top or the Tron piece. All right, well, we got the fourth land for our great creator. Looks like we're against Just Guy. It's talking to. Oh, yeah, we'll rip it off the top. No problem. <laughs> uh, I was talking with Dalloway. Um, he was talking about how he likes Jeskai and where it's at right now. So he was on that for the IQ. He made top A along with Cat. I'm curious how they did. I hope they made uh, the finish the, you know, the league. I mean, to finish the whole thing well. Okay, we're just going to drop Big Karn here. And we're going to exile Sahili. I don't need to get a cat comboed for no reason. Cat combo. If I have no cards in hand, obviously we can ensnare and bridge it, but. Ooh, looks like they're digging. land Let's uh, think real hard on our upkeep here. All right, so let's just tick up. Take a card from them there. Another Sahili. Let's go Stirrings. We'll grab that tower. Down tick. And let's be annoying to our opponent. So we could Spyglass here, but they shouldn't be able to combo either way. Let's just go Trinosphere, and we're just going to prevent them from doing any kind of like good cantrips or snapcastering things back. 
and we'll pass it over. Opponent should be in a pretty tough bind here. They can hit whatever they want, it doesn't really matter. Karn's gonna, big Karn's gonna be able to tick down and then we'll cast the infinite guy or blow up another land. They're probably gonna hit Great Creator, I imagine, bring it down to one so he can't uh, actually find anything. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So opponent can't cast anything anymore, and that should be game for them. Well, I mean, this turn they can't, so we're just going to be able to resolve some pretty powerful things, so. Let's get rid of their Sacred Foundry. Let's cast this. Let's cast Old School Ulamog. Get rid of that. I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the power. Okay. So we want to bring in the Thrag Tusk. We want to bring in the Ballista here. It can interact with them at instant speed, which is going to be huge. Let's take out the Worm Coils. I don't think the uh, Ugans are going to be that big, too. We should bring in the Claims. I expect it to be pretty relevant. We don't need this Ulamog. I'm going to leave that one in. Let's trim one Relic. Let's do that. I swear I have the biggest love-hate relationship with the Relic. My uh, teammate absolutely hates the card. If he could play zero in his 75, he would. Um, where I like, I really appreciate the card, but I hate having tons of them. Like, I love the card because it obviously is just a cantrip, but in some matchups you're like, yay, let me pay two mana to draw one card. Yeah. yeah, we're good at this. We are professionals at forming Tron. So I just put that to the bottom. With this way, this hand's shaping up. Getting multiple greens can be hard, so we don't want to just be stuck with them in hand. <sighs> Wasn't even an issue, apparently. We're just professionals at drawing Tron today. Fetch it before, so I want to be able to cast the stirring so the scrying. Dropping Sahili. Okay, okay. I'm going straight for the combo, I bet. Good thing we're going to stop him. So we can drop Car and Great Creator, and if we're gonna try to stop them, our best bet obviously is just gonna be Spyglass them. So let's do that. Yeah. All right, they did have the combo in hand, and we want to name Sahili Arai. Regular Sahili Rai, okay. They actually didn't have the mana for it. They can Tefray bounce our Spyglass if they want to tap out, but then we just lock them out of the game. 
Easy league indeed. The opponent knows they, they lose, right? Something going on I don't know about. Okay, we're still playing. We're still playing. Ancient stirrings, fetch a Thrag Tusk Cup. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pono was just dead there. Pono was locked out of the game. Uh, they were just playing. I'm sure they were just playing to their best out in hopes that we didn't have Lattice, but we got the Lattice. We got the dumb lock. It's not good enough. Ugh, this hand's suspect. Real suspect. I'm gonna keep it, but I don't like it. hate the bullets that can't kill so a spear. This seems real good for them. Like, real good. Uh, so this hand's, like, super awkward, right? Or, like, I don't want to crack the, the map in case we do rip the Tron land off this next draw. But if we miss our land drop here, we'll have, like, if we don't get the land drop next one, we have to crack it. And then we have to get the right piece, so... Oh, they're shooting. I'm dumb. I thought they were shooting us. I don't think it matters what we do here. I'm pretty sure we're just dead. Because no matter what we cast, it's not going to be relevant enough. Yeah, yeah. We, we're dead here. We're dead. All right, we want to bring these in, and we want to bring in the worm coil. Take out both big daddies. Take out the relics. Take out one O stone. Alright, 
this hand's not doing much either. We'll keep this one. We need to get a we need to get get some good stirrings here in order to uh, form Tron and then go with Thrag Tusk into Karn. But so we can make that happen. I'm gonna bottom that because we're gonna do a turn one stirrings here. Mm -mm. Now we got a map. Rift Cool, we got another Tron piece. We're not gonna run out. I don't want them to shatter it, I don't think. That'd be pretty tragic. So let's actually grab the star. Run out the star. We'll pass it over. Because even if we did run out, we wouldn't really be able to do anything relevant with it. So we're better off just... We, we have to take a point here as a result, but um, we're better off just casting it. Take the hit. And then we can form Tron. Let's draw an extra card. And then fetch up a mine. I'll pass it over. Opponent's thinking real hard. Okay, we'll uh, see if they have the skull crack. No skull crack. All right, we need, we'd like to hit another artifact here. That'd be pretty sweet. We can blow it up and claim, gain some extra life. Preferably a star. We're gonna be able to card and start upticking them as well, which I think will be good. Start taking some cards out of their hand, especially if they don't cast anything or put putting a land down. They didn't. Okay, that's sweet. We could down tick, take out the Eidolon, so then we can cast the star without problem, and then claim ourselves. That might be worth it. So then we don't take the two. Let's do that. It's a race, it's a race! <sighs> We're gonna go to eight, at least. Let's see if they, they tap out. If they tap out with a helix, we're going to claim our star. We got the triple bolt. Do they got it? Take the card from them. And leave them with just top decking a Boros charm. Cool. 
cool as an Eidolon. Play this, shoot that. <sighs> if we swing, we can kill our opponent on the next turn. The only way they can kill us is with a Boros Charm anyway, which we can't stop with a third test, so let's do this. So the reason I brought it in is if we can if we're if we're at the point where we're fetching it up, we're not doing that till turn four. And if I have turn three Tron, I would rather um, cast the Worm Coil, increase the odds of hitting it, um, rather than not. So like a lot of times, if we can Karn, we we can go fetch up like a Trinisphere, which can slow them down a ton, or a a Lattice, which just to lock them out of the game. Um, so that's my thought there, is that I'm, I'm usually going to fetch up like a Trinisphere or a Lattice just to try to slow them down a ton or to lock them out of the game, where I want to just hit Worm Coils as much as possible. That might not be right. Yeah, I only have two in the main right now. I used to be on three, but I trimmed one to put in another Relic. Um, it may be correct just to be running the three, because Worm Coil is pretty amazing um, overall. So... Worm Coral is just solid, but I didn't want to trim any more Karns or um, Liberateds or Ugans. Um, it might be correct to actually trim one Great Creator um, for that, so then you're not hurting yourselves too much, but I, I'm i just playing around with different lists right now. This hand's no good. This hand's good enough. It's a little awkward. We're going to bottom that because we're going to have to Sylvan Scrying. See if we can get a worm coil. I guess the odds of where we I guess we form turn three Tron, we if we can fetch up the worm coil, we're dropping at turn four. That might be more worthwhile having one of the side for that. That's rough. is good do we want to fetch up a green source or do we want to fetch up tron we're probably going to go fetch up tron they're on two lands and we can go double car and liberated Kind, you might be right. Maybe we do want to leave it in the side. Take a card from them or down tick. If we down tick, they have a two mana spell. We're at five. Yeah, we're gonna go for the down tick here. Alrighty, we're dead. Well, it's a turn slower than we need it to be, because we'll be able to double down her. Yeah, I, I was on three in the main, one in the side, and yeah, in those instances, I, I think the absolutely leaving one in the side makes a lot of sense. Ooh, this hand's rough. We have to hit another land in order to make ourselves go off. Hmm. I think the rest is just too high here. If we had any other land, I'd keep it, but we don't. Mm-hmm. Suspect.
All right, well, we're gonna be a turn behind on land drops, but we can at the very least crack the star next turn, get two draws. If we hit a Tron piece, obviously we just go for the scrying, but other, at least we could be able to stirrings. I'm gonna scryings here. Let's see if he gets bell pierce. Snared. Tragic. I wanted to scrying there so then I can uh, just get the land and then I can next turn we'll be able to map and we'll be able to stirrings, but. Teferi? Dark set. I swear if we get puzzle box, I'm gonna cry. Run piece, that's not a power plant. Yeah. Cryptic's gonna be painful to deal with. Interesting they're not down ticking. So if they're not down ticking, they're probably having everything they need. This spell's gonna get countered anyway, so I'm just gonna run out the worm coil. I'd rather trigger the sanctum with Karn. Path them? Oh, click. That's unfortunate. Goodbye, Karn. Click and Mars, that's so freaking good. Just go ahead and tuck my card. I don't get anything in return for it. Three mana, three one flying thoughtsies with no mana co uh, with uh, no life loss. So good. We can blast zone. Tick it up to three. And blow it up in two turns. Took a supreme and two unknowns left in hand. To go for the colonnade beats this early? We're not doing anything, so it'll be fine. <laughs> Colony. 
colonnade. I feel like that's ballsy. <laughs> like, I know we have nothing, but I feel like they're supposed to respect it a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, you have Cryptic Command in hand, you're like, nah, I don't need it. I don't need to cast it. Oh, come on. Can it move log off the top? Nope, nope, we can get lands though. I swear if they like flash in Snapcaster and kill us with Snapcaster and uh, Colonnade right now, it's gonna be sad. No, nope, I didn't do it, so. We're gonna take another hit, take another hit. We really need to draw something here. spell okay okay we drew we drew a redraw <gasps> nothing nothing okay well we're gonna cast it we're gonna go get ourselves a ghost quarter and we're gonna buy ourselves one more turn Uh-uh. As bad as if they have it on the land, they get to go colonnade and hold up mana for cryptic too. <laughs> uh we're not in a great position, folks, because they definitely play that land. You know what, Greg? You're not wrong. So this is definitely gonna get countered. Get a screwdriver out the back? Is that something you, I feel like I have never had to do that for the record. I never, I never hit a deer either, though. I would be like traumatized if I had to take a screwdriver to a deer, man. That is like ridiculous. Just country things. <laughs> okay, let's bring these in. Take out the wormies. I have a love-hate relationship with the relics here. Cryptic Command was definitely the screwdriver. We knew they had it too. I just really wanted them to cast it, you know, and kill us with it. Because that's reasonable. Mm, no lands. Perfect. Ugh. This hand's so great and so awful. Mm -mm -mm. We get one scry and one draw to hit any land. Gosh. Nope. I really hate keeping hands like this, but... Board in all 15. They can't count on them all. I think they can. I'd give them credit that they could. Mm -mm -mm. 
At least we get two draws next turn, right? And happy Father's Day to everyone out there that is a father. Fantastic. We appreciate all of you. Our payoff's not even that great. <laughs> the tournament went terribly. I went 0-3 and, and dropped. Like, it was really bad, because, like, I went against... Um, I went against the mirror... Game one, he was uh, a turn faster, and he breached in his Woodfall Prime, his blew up two of my lands, and then I died. And then game two, I uh, breached in a Woodfall Prime, blew up two of his lands, and died. Um, goodbye, Power Plant. Power. And then... Uh, are we going to get surgical? Yeah, we are. And this is why you're supposed to keep in Relic, but I don't know. I should have kept it in. Um, and then game three, we were both ramping well, and I had a guaranteed turn four um, Titan, and if I got a, br uh, a Breach, I'd be able to turn five him. Um, but I didn't, <laughs> obviously, here in the story. Um, and then let's just fetch up. We're gonna fetch up a blast zone here. We're gonna get some utility lands going. Um, and he got his breach, and he did something that I really disagree with, and I've been like talking about it constantly. But so I was at 19 life, and I had five lands in play, and he fetched up two Valakuts, and then fetched up two more Valakuts, and put me to 13. And if I drew, um, if I drew Escape Shift. Or I drew a breach, I win that game because I was going to be able to 18 him and he was at 1 and he was tapped out. Um, but I felt like he should have put me to, uh, to 1 because he should have fetched up 2 Valakuts and then 2 Mountains and shot me for 12. Uh, but he didn't and his logic was that he felt that getting the 4 Valakuts in play was safer. And I like really disagree with that. I felt like it was safer to just run out the... Um, Safer to put me to one because then it takes me off fetch lands. Um, but I don't know. That was my thought. But then, yeah, so we lost that game because I needed to draw either a breach or a shift, and we didn't. Um, played against Infect, and they turn three'd me, and um, then I wiped his board and kept it off. And then the last game, I needed to draw a. Um, I needed to draw any spell. And I drew lands in a row, so that was really tragic. And then against humans, a similar scenario. Uh, game one, game one, he meddling mage my uh, he kite sailed me, took my payoff, meddling mage my other payoff, and I could never clear the board, and he just overwhelmed me. And then after that, I kept him off the board with uh, a prime time going to get uh, Valakuts to kill all of his stuff, and then he never got it. And then in game three. Um, if I drew the Valakut a turn earlier, or um, or any uh, removal spell, I would have been able to kill his creatures, get back, and just start chaining removal. But I didn't, so we uh, we went 0-3 and, and dropped. Um, teammates did pretty well. Um, Blake was in the running for top 8 uh, for the last two rounds. He lost his win and in, where he would have been able to win and then draw in, um, but he ended up drawing that round. So then, if he, if he won the following round, he would have been able to still make it. But he unfortunately got pretty trounced by um, just really bad luck. He uh, rest in peace his hogvine opponent, and his opponent was able to destroy it. And then he, uh, his opponent also fought through a surgical on his. Um, Hogak, and then just proceeded to cast Gravecrawlers and Vengevines and beat him for the win. So, 
felt really bad for uh, Blake, but he had a really good run. Uh, other teammate uh, also went four and two, and then the other ones went uh, three and three, I think. But they were all doing much better than me. Uh, did kept it in the running the whole time. So everybody was only like one game off. So I think that was pretty cool. Probably just going to play land blast zone up to three here. Take out the Nars set and the V click. Yeah, chilling with your kiddo, playing Animal Jams on the tablet and watching me on the stream. That does sound like good life. <laughs> so, like, I didn't play... Um, Tron at the IQ because I just felt like I'm just not happy with where the blue white matchup is right now and I was really afraid of uh, just going across a lot of burn um, because of the new uh, canopy, canopy land they have access to um, so that's why I ended up picking scape shift and I think it was the right call at the top tables were like three scape shift players and I think two of them made in top eight and I think uh, two of them were like competing for it so Definitely think that's where I want it to be. Um, every match I lost, we were in game three, and I was one card off of winning, so I don't mind. We're in a pretty low life situation here. We're gonna be able to Narset. I mean, I blow up the last one to take out Narset and V click, but they can easily just Teferi here. No Teferi, okay. Resto, sure. Let's see what they pick. Problem for us is they still have uh, quite the board presence. All right, man, have a good dinner. Sure. I'm gonna go to two here. We have to, what, draw a Thrag Tusk to stay alive? Not it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not really happy with this uh, blue white matchup with uh, this version. It's uh, not just doing great. I feel like they just have a lot of answers for us now, a lot of interaction. Um, the Field of Ruins, really good for them, obviously, with the surgicals. Tron with three redraws. Let's see if we can find ourselves a payoff. I like it a lot. It seems a lot sleeker. Um, I'm not sure if I like the, you know, the pay structure they've gone with for the leagues. That's you know, because just because I was able to make a pretty healthy profit with the um, old competitive league pay structure, but it's a good middle ground. Um, I'm glad they are updating it. I thought they were literally just going to let it die, which would have really sucked. Looks like we've got a mirror. Oh boy. We still don't have a payoff.
It's no arena, but that's not bad. Yep, we want to card them, so we just need to rip it off the top here. Nope. So it might be better for us here to ghost bring, run out Ghost Quarter, and we can Sphere for a piece. That way we can hold them off of uh, Tron for a turn. <laughs> Still nothing. Okay. We'll grab the sphere, I guess, for a redraw. Or the star. We still got nothing. But they are two turns behind. Yeah, payoff. And they F6. The value! The value! their forests look really good. Sure. All the maps you want. We're just gonna we're gonna end the game on it. Is that okay? Watch they have like a main deck claim. Blow us out. <laughs> Yeah, I really like the liquid metal coating. It's a, uh, it's a good lock uh, on people. So, I have not removed it from my sideboard since I've added it in. We got two Tron pieces and uh, stirrings, so let's see if we're uh, see if we're lucky enough to just get there. They're keeping a seven, which means they should have turned three Tron, right? Or not? Leading off with Blast Zone in the Sphere, and we uh, we rip the map. Let's uh, let's hope they don't have a stirrings. I mean uh, a claim. What? Did they keep that hand just off of that? No way. No way. Are you kidding me? Did you keep a one land sphere and a claim with no Tron pieces? Oh my gosh. seems wrong. That just seems so wrong.
Alright, they've got another Tron piece. So I'll have Tron next turn. Scrying, sure. Okay. So we have the option of here of forming Tron. Um, off of the forest and the power plant have five men left over. We can run out Karn, Great Creator. Um, the problem is on uh, on one mana, we don't, really can't do much. I guess I'd rather gamble here and see if we can just rip the mine off of the stirrings. Yeah, I'm running the old... Yeah, we got the mine. Um, I'm running the old Ulamog just for the prevention of getting milled out. Um, I'm not sure if it's correct. Uh, we were just, my teammate and I were talking about it, and we, I wanted to try it out at the very least. Because if we run against the Hogvine deck and they're going to go off and they get greedy and just want to sack their board to mill us, um, they could sack their entire board and then find out that they can't mill us and they've uh, depleted a bunch of resources to it. Because usually they mill up their deck so much that if they do that and then our entire graveyard's reset, we're in a pretty solid position. We ripped the other tower, so we can just car in here and lattice them. Yeah, casting him is fine. You know, he vindicates instead of double vindicating, and it's a destroy instead of an exile. Um, his swings are sweet, though. Annihilator 4 is devastating compared to the exile top 20. People can play through an exile top 20. People have a hard time playing through losing four of their permanents after we blew up one of them. I love that both of them are indestructible. I also talked about playing the other Kozilek, uh, the original Kozilek, because I would love to draw four cards off of uh, a payoff. That just seems really sweet, but Ulamog seemed like the more practical choice. Yeah, we'll keep this. Turn three, little Karn. I'm in. <gasps> Let's control again. I don't know if they scoop. Opponent can... Blue-white can fight through turn three Tron pretty well. So how would you guys feel if we played the 16 Stifle deck with um, with Shadow of Doubt? Just prevent them from doing all the fetches. We just don't care. You're not going to get any fetches. You get no triggers. We counter all of them. And we also play Shadow Doubt to do even more uh, BM business. And <laughs> um, get him with that. All right, here's a Karn. Countered. <gasps> it resolved. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. We got the liquid metal. Interesting. Are they going to drop a V click on us? I 
I mean, what deck doesn't lose to Hogak going off on turn two, though, right? be greedy. I'm just going to blow up the hollow fountain here. I don't want to go fetch up uh, Lattice and lose that as well. Pass phases, get rid of the white mana for the path, and then drop our worm coil. Next turn we can actually cast an Udamog, folks. See, this is the downside to that 11 mana over the 10. Just couldn't cast it this turn. Ooh, they're gonna path their own. Okay. Now the white man is gone, we'll just play a worm coil and pass it over. Sphere on our Karn? How rude. I'm gonna be a reasonable magic player and I'm gonna Ulamog. I'm gonna blow up that D Sphere. I'm gonna go fetch up other Ulamog. <laughs> we are monsters. <laughs> Okay, so we'll keep in the we'll keep in the relics this time. Um, take out the wormies, we'll take out the ballista, and I'll take out the ugans. We'll try it like this. That way, I can keep in the ulamogs. I want to see if I can keep the top in them for the payoff as well. seem good enough. This hand seems good enough. professionals. No issue. We got this. Come on, opponent. Tap out. Just tap out. Yes. Yes. They didn't even mine us? They didn't even care. Oh my gosh. How savage. I don't even care about hitting the Ashiok here. I just want to take their lands from them. I 
Yeah, we are not searching. Good thing Stirrings isn't even searching. Do I think Hogak is broken or if it's just hype and, um, and inconsistent? Um, I think it's a sweet card. I think it's very good at what it's supposed to do. I think that people are overestimating the brokenness of it right now because it's new and the decks are still... Um, Decks are still formulating their plan of how they want to attack this, right? So right now, you're going to see people trying out a lot of things. We're doing it right now. We're playing multiple. We're increasing our account of relics in the main. We're trying out another card just to see if it can help combat the, the problem of it, right? Um, the people that are screaming out and like, Oh my god, you need to ban this card. It's too strong and all that stuff. I, I think those people are just screaming out because they want to scream out. Um, because I think it's a pretty ridiculous thing to expect uh, any kind of banning this early. Like, the deck is literally just figuring out. It's just being played. People are just deciding if it's good enough. They're still working on different lists. Um, have we gotten to turn two by it? Yeah, we've gotten turn two by it. But this is modern. You can turn to a lot of things um, if you get the right hand. If it becomes consistently turn two, that's a different story. But it's not consistently turn tuning. It's, it's like more often than not, it's a turn three, turn four deck. If the chance of it being turn three is too high, then yeah, we should get rid of that card. But right now, more often than not, I see it like a turn four deck. It's super grindy and it's super resilient, which is awesome. You know, having this graveyard deck that can do it is, is just exactly where you want it to be, right? Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really think it's a problem in the format right now. I think it's fine. Um, and I think it's far too early to figure it out. We have to, we have to let the London Mulligan come into play. We have to fig let people, you know, really breathe in and see if... See if Modern Horizons is where we want it to be. We're already seeing a lot of new cards getting played, which is really awesome. Um, we're just going to keep ticking up here. Take more cards from them. Um, let's draw a card. Relic is good. So yeah, I don't I don't think it's uh, it might very well be broken, but I think we have to give it more time to figure out uh, to see if it, need, it is going to be broken. You know, everybody was screaming for Grixis Death Shadow to be banned, and then everybody was screaming for Phoenix to get banned. Everybody still screamed for Tron to get banned, but I think it's fine for now. Um, if it's still dominating like f decks and tournaments in you know a couple months from now and the percentages are getting too high yeah then we should see uh, how we want to approach that if we if there is a banning needed but for now i think it's fine people just have to adapt to it all right so we went three two with this new version we did not go against a single hogak deck so bit of a bummer i wanted to try out that new tech but that's okay we're gonna go ahead and call it for this leak so i'm gonna end this recording